Hello to the HU community. I hope you're staying safe and healthy. HU is a very different meeting this year. But I'm excited that we're using technology to find meaningful ways to gather and exchange ideas. HU's 2020 theme focuses on the opportunities, discoveries, and solutions that will shape future generations and society. This resonates deeply with NASA's science mission directorate as we seek to explore the connectedness of our planet and its systems, our sun and our solar system. We seek new knowledge and understanding of the Earth and the universe to its farthest reaches and to the beginning of its existence. And that is exactly what you're doing, exploring opportunities to enhance our understanding and knowledge and improve our quality of life. Thank you to the science community for your continued pursuit and critical research despite this year's challenges. Thank you to the students who are new to the science community and thank you to everybody who's been here for many years. The work you do is critical and important to society. I also want to thank the Ignite at HEU speakers for entertaining us and sharing your passion and making us think. Communicating science is vitally important. So thank you for taking on this challenge and sharing some really amazing talks. I hope you have a productive fall meeting and continue the excellent work. Thank you to all. Greetings, AGU scientists from the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish people in Washington state. I stand here atop a terminal moraine overlooking Puget Sound, which was carved by glaciers during the Ice Age that we can now more fully understand thanks to the work of scientists like you. We can also correlate your work with thousands of years of observation documented in the traditional knowledge and oral histories of the indigenous people of this region. The work of scientists has never been more important. If there's a silver lining to the global pandemic of COVID-19, it is the worldwide appreciation of the importance of science as a collaborative journey to further knowledge, to experiment and test assumptions and learn from failure and keep learning to address the challenges before us. You know better than anyone that we are facing an existential threat from climate change right now. As US Secretary of the Interior, the impact was obvious everywhere. We saw accelerating extinctions, ocean acidification, drought and coastal erosion, fires and severe storms and more. Yet I marveled at the emerging tools created by the USGS in collaboration with NASA and colleagues from around the world to accelerate our knowledge from space, like land cover and freshwater aquifer levels, drought and wildfire risk. Not to mention innovations on the ground too, like the use of eDNA to assess ecosystem health and the immeasurable value provided by natural systems like forests and wetlands. We need your knowledge, your wisdom, and your collaboration more than ever before to understand our impact on this one planet we share and how to reverse course. So to reiterate a favorite proverb, we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. Through your important work in science, you're helping us understand what needs to be done to create a sustainable path forward for the generations to come. So thank you and have a great conference. Hi, fellow geoscientists. It's great to get together virtually this year, but let's not sugarcoat our situation. You're tuning in from Zoom all over the earth, flooded with memories of AGU of your and I'm trying to ignore the bedtime shenanigans of my four kids who are bouncing off the walls from 100 plus days of Zoom school. And we're all wondering what AGU will bring us this year apart from our 1 a.m. Zoom talks. But I'm here to tell you that it's never been a better time to be an earth scientist. Decades of careful, robust investigation are shaping policy at the local, state, federal, and international levels. Programs like the AGU Virtual Advocacy Days and the Thriving Earth Exchange are helping to strengthen the art from science to solutions. And within our own community, a long overdue transformation is underway towards a more inclusive, equitable, and diverse science. The AGU Bridge Program, as well as grassroots efforts such as Black and Geoscience and 500 Women Scientists are channeling our shared goals and laying the foundation for our future success. Most of these efforts have taken place over the last several years and reflect a broadening of the definition of a scientist 
as scientists and the capacity of us as individuals and a collective to enact change. So I ask you, has there ever been a better time to engage for change within the AGU community and beyond as we rise together to meet the most profound challenges of the 21st century? Because no matter where you are right now and no matter your circumstance, we are bound by a shared vision for a future alive with possibility, discovery, and yes, even transformation. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to wrestle four future geoscientists into bed. I just want to thank all of my AGU colleagues for the important work they continue to do to better understand our planetary environment and our place in it. These are difficult times as we deal with multiple crises, not the least of which is a global pandemic that threatens our health, safety, and livelihood. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. Here in the US, we just elected a president who has pledged to embrace science and the lessons it offers us and restore America's international leadership on climate at a pivotal moment. Thanks to the tireless work of the scientific community, we are in a position to make progress over the next few years in addressing the great challenges we face, including the greatest challenge of all time, the climate crisis. Let's change the world for the better. Hello everyone, Admiral Tim Gallaudet here, Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Oceans and Atmosphere and the Deputy Administrator of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. I know this has been a really tough time for those of us in the geosciences. Field work has been canceled or cut back significantly. The collegial networking and bonding, which strengthens our collaboration, has been very difficult to carry on virtually. And the essential exchanges of information and ideas that occurs at major scientific meetings has been severely limited, you know, like AGU now having to be done virtually. So all told, we've really felt like we've been on the ropes during this pandemic, just like the rest of the country. But I'm here to encourage you not to throw in the towel and don't give up the ship because there is hope and here's why. In NOAA, for example, I've seen our people not just persevere in performing our mission, but actually double down in their commitment. And they are adapting and innovating in ways that sometimes only can be done uh, by experiencing this kind of adversity. And there's three examples I'll share with you. For example, during this record setting hurricane season, we went and deployed a fleet of underwater gliders because our ships couldn't go out and perform those surveys. And that improved the accuracy of our weather predictions and saved tons of lives. We performed a fishery survey in Alaska doing the same with autonomous surface vehicles. And they were able to carry out a survey normally done with ships. And then we did an important mapping mission, an ocean mapping mission north of Alaska. Again, our ships couldn't get up there. So we adapted and used, used autonomous surface vehicles. So just think about these remarkable examples and let them encourage you to not just carry on, but rise to the challenge. We're all in this together and the extraordinary women and men of NOAA are moving forward. You can too. My name is Sandra Kaufman and I am the Deputy Director of NASA's Earth Science Division. 2020 has been a rough year full of so many challenges and struggles for all of us. The science community has overcome many challenges in the past and together we will overcome the challenges that we are currently facing. We all have found ways to continue our work, continue to strive, and continue to connect. And that's what tonight is all about, connections. Tonight's Ignite Talks are diverse and relevant to all of us. And I love our community that it comes together to share in this way. Five minutes with the slides automatically flipping is so challenging, yet so much fun, and you all make it look so easy. Virtual AGU this year will be interesting. It is going to be one of the largest, most diverse and dynamic virtual scientific conferences to date. Unfortunately, we will not run into each other in between sessions, or walk to the Moscone, or doing the daily beer hours for side conversations. So we must be deliberate in our connections. I challenge you to all, I challenge you all to find new ways to connect with your colleagues and to make the most of the next two weeks. Please stop by the NASA exhibit booth in the virtual exhibit hall and check out some of the great Earth Science Talks that will be happening during AGU. This year's AGU themes focuses on the discoveries, opportunities, and solutions to shape the future, and you are all directly contributing to this. Thank you for your perseverance this year and for your contributions to understanding our planet. I look forward to seeing all of you in person at uh, future fall meetings. Stay safe and healthy during the holidays and keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Tom Steyer and I want to deliver a sincere and heartfelt thank you to the members of the American Geophysical Union. The last four years have been really hard on the truth and on science and on scientists. 
and you have persevered in your work, persevered in your fight for the idea of truth, persevered in your idea that all thoughts about the future are based on the bedrock of science. We are in the fight of our life right now to preserve a livable and sustainable planet for human beings, but also for every other species. And your work is absolutely critical to understand what is going on right now in the world and to understand where we're going under various scenarios going forward. There has been no time in human history where your work, where your willingness to stand up for the truth, for your insistence on science as the bedrock for thinking about the future is, has been more important or more relevant. And your willingness under very trying situation for the last four years, when everything that your lives stand for is under attack, to stand up for your values and for truth, says a lot about the value of science. And it says a lot about the value of the human spirit doing the right thing under difficult circumstances. So I want to end where I started. Thank you for everything you've done, your work, your perseverance, your courage, and thank you for everything you're going to do. This is an inflection point. Everything from here goes back to depending on the kind of thoughts, the kind of research, and the kind of values that you represent for this entire society. Hi, AGU. Earth observation is in a golden age, and it's just in time because the climate and the biosphere are in a crisis. Um, and as we boot out of the pandemic, the uh, COVID crisis, uh, to, into a sustainable economy, this massive new data sets, uh, like planets, which now produces more than a billion square kilometers of Earth imagery per week, are critical to enabling uh, that transition. And it starts with the science and the scientists. There are more ways than ever to get access to planets data through the NASA system or European Space Agency or your university, get in touch. Let's change the world together. Thanks very much. Hey everyone, I am Sarah Parkak. I'm a professor of uh, anthropology at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And I, for me, the work that I do with uh, satellite images and remote sensing um, owes a lot to the field of geosciences. Um, so many of the early studies done using NASA, NASA's earliest satellites in the 1970s and 1980s really paved the way for the work that I do um, using satellites to map ancient archaeological sites. So first of all, thank you Geosciences for, for uh, helping the field of remote sensing develop. And also, you know, in these really difficult times, um, the, the, the thing we've learned, I think more than anything else in 2020, is that facts matter. The truth matters. Experts matter. And all your voices, whether it's in the classroom or um, on the internet, or uh, as, as public advocates, uh, it's, it's absolutely essential. Um, and we've, we've really learned just how important our voices are. And I hope that as, as the world returns to its new normal, um, you know, science and, and experts and, and relying on people like us to tell the truth as we, as we work towards a better future, um, that, that becomes the new normal as well. So, so keep on keeping on, persevere. I wish you a wonderful conference and of course, a great holiday season. This is Dawn Wright, Esri Chief Scientist, coming to you from my secret LEGO Marine GIS lab. Uh, oh, oh. Actually, this is the real Dawn Wright uh, from Esri, sending this salute to you at Ignite at AGU. You know, as Earth and space scientists, we know and structure our lives around scientific truth. We're shaped by an enduring faith in the power of evidence and facts. And a hopeful new chorus that we're hearing in this age of the coronavirus is, listen to the scientists. But at the same time, this pandemic and the current struggle against racial and other injustices are holding up mirrors to who people really are if they choose to look. And there are some hard hearts out there tribalism seems to be taking hold harder than ever. Even with people dying all around us, we have the new COVID deniers to go along with the long-standing climate change deniers. We're facing the unhappy reality that the willful suppression 
or dismissal of facts may be one of the biggest barriers to a more sustainable world. As Martin Barron of the Washington Post has said, facts and truth are matters of life and death. Misinformation, disinformation, delusions and deceit can kill. As such, we're now called to turn our science into action, be that in response to a pandemic or systemic racism or to a biosphere that is dangerously hot and out of balance. So I love how each and every one of you are doing this through your participation in IGNITE at AGU. We're also ever reminded that turning our science into action is ultimately a human problem requiring us to lead with our hearts as well as our scientific minds. So may we also be kind to each other, including during this event and our time at AGU 2020 with a kindness that doesn't put others down, that's not tribal, does not separate or segregate, a kindness rather that encourages and lifts others up. So way to go, Ignite at AGU, enjoy. <laughs>